Hmm? And they bare children to them, and the same became mighty men. Right? Mighty men, not giants. The enemy says giants. No, 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 no. Mighty men. Which were of old men of renown. Now, because of the wickedness of the times, the mighty men we understand that they were mighty in wickedness. They were renowned for their wickedness above all peoples. They were not the physical, intellectual giants. Hmm? They came mighty men, which were of old men of renown. You see the separation between the word giant, hmm? giants, and mighty men? And the fact that the giants were in the earth before the sons of God came unto the daughters of men. Men of renown. Renown for their wickedness. Everybody knew them. And they displayed their wickedness. Even their evil inventions. Aye, some inventions are absolutely evil. And of course, when scripture talks about inventions, it means discoveries. Of those things that are already present. But the world, you see, knows not God. And therefore, it will not recognise anything that is there being discovered except if it's outward. Or the loose term for being discovered, like penicillin was discovered. Etc. comes to mind. They're not talking about a spiritual world, they're talking about a secular world. It's always about a secular world. Carnal, secular, physical world. Discoveries are finding things that are already present, hidden. Hidden. There is nothing new under the sun. God has laid it all out. Hmm? God saw the wickedness of man. Hmm? God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man, whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing, and the fowl of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. There was no mistake here. God is showing forth the attributes of a man. That is simply the terms that are used here. For the benefit of man. And God saw the wickedness, and it was terrible wickedness, wasn't it? And it was not, <clears throat> and never will be, fallen angels. Hmm? Having uh, come unto the daughters of men. 
again, as we said from the beginning, there are those who are worshipping demonic forces, demonic fallen angels. Who then say, well, the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they, they bear this wickedness. These giants in the earth doesn't say that, doesn't say that to a man of renown. Okay. The giants, and we'll keep on about this, the giants were in the earth before the sons of God came unto the daughters of men. And then afterwards there was still... Giants in the earth. Giants in the earth who <coughs> lay down on huge beds. Hmm? I hope that clears that up. I hope that clears that up. You know, today. We still have men of renown. We equally have, well, men of renown generally speaking, it is used as a term today and previously for <clears throat> wicked people. Wicked people. But there is a small area whereby it is used for good people, renowned for their good works, renowned for their being good people, for their decency, for their honesty, for their integrity. They're renowned. They stand out above the crowd, head and shoulders above everybody else. <clears throat> we also have, as I said before, physical giants. Not a mass of them, but we still do have physical giants. Even outside the Guinness Book of Records. Okay, we have them. We have all sorts of sizes of people in this world all sorts because God has created it that way because it's pleased him to do so okay. so let us get away from this teaching of the ungodliness of those who are worshipping angels. That this is teaching the worshipping of angels. By having angels come in unto the daughters of men. In some quarters it's the <coughs> sons of God. Coming in unto the daughters of men and then producing giants. Hmm? Evil spirits as giants. And lastly, the religion of God had become so utterly, utterly corrupted in the earth that the sons of God those who professed to be the sons of God corrupted themselves in not going after their own kind and of course, doing that, those whom they came in unto would have turned them even further away from God. And 
And so, the salt of the earth was greatly taken away. The earth rotted even faster. And what happened? There was only one thing left. Hmm? The world that then was had to be destroyed. So often the Lord is found sweeping the world with the besom of destruction. One way or another. The besom of destruction, says Isaiah. And of course the great flood that followed because of the rotten carcass of this world the world began again it began again and so it was when Christ came into the world That world that he came into was swept clean, so to speak. Because Christ swept away for all time that world. He overthrew it by righteousness. A flood of righteousness and brought in a new world. BC was taken away, swept away, <gasps> washed away. Under the blood of Christ, as it were, so to speak. Not as though it were justified. But sealed up for all eternity. And we have AD. As simply a figure. As Moses going through the Red Sea was the figure. Of the blood of Christ that should then, in that period of time, cover the sins of those who believed and believed by an act of God, not an act of self. We're talking figures, figuratively. But of course the blood of Jesus Christ in the heavenly figure dealt with the chosen children of God. We that have been called of God and not ourselves to be the children of God we are washed in the blood of the Lamb and made whole. This world out here is rushing headlong to destruction. And as we said from throughout we have giants, a few giants here and there, and we have a few giants not only physically, but intellectually. Great, magnificent structures are created. Sadly, the great thinkers that used to be or no more. 
the great intellectual thinkers, the great poets, the great musicians, and so on and so forth. They don't walk the earth anymore. No. It is sad. They're hidden away, you see. Just as we are hidden. Hidden in a corner. And God has hidden us and them in the corner, exposing the world to its own destruction. And this time it won't be an overflowing of water, but from the fiery appearance of Jesus Christ the Lord taking vengeance upon those that know not God nor obey the gospel of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ the gospel of obedience towards God so Mr. Enemy will ask you this as God asks you within your own conscience unless you've sealed now your own conscience seared it as with a hot iron what hast thou to take the word of God in thy hands in order to commit sacrilege with the word of God it is because you are demonic, like your father the devil, who in the wilderness took the word of God into his hands and he cited it to the very living word of God. How futile, how blind, how foolish was that. Oh, yes, and may we just say, in closing, how many of these devils are in the pulpits and on the streets and are teachers of others and they're blind themselves? How many? How many devils are standing there with the word of God and in all time and for every time and every day and age God is pronouncing to them the condemnation over what they're doing in misinterpreting deliberately in some cases misinterpreting his word to favour lies lies and hypocrisy hmm? And today, you know, it has gotten that bad with these beggars that you can go and you can check this out on the internet. Look at the disgraceful presentation of ministers behind the pulpit. No, we're not talking about being a dandy behind the pulpit. That's obnoxious. If ever I went into a place and saw that, I'd get out. Totally obnoxious. But there is that presentation of cleanness. When a person stands behind a pulpit and he hasn't got a jacket on and he hasn't got a tie on. Just a plain tie, plain jacket, plain shirt. When they're standing there in shirt, sleeves generally rolled up, forget it. Forget it if there's no pride in your appearance. 
because you've no pride before God. You've no respect for God in being decently presentable. And you're nothing but a hypocrite. You shouldn't be taking the word of God in your hands. Do you know something? There's an awful lot of this. It's casual dress. And you've got the sacred word of God in front of you. The two don't go together. Equally, as we say, if you're going to punch yourself up to be a dandy, that doesn't go together. It's just plain, ordinary dress. Okay. Nothing to attract. Because what we are dealing with is the plain word of God. It is laid down plainly. To be plainly understood. It's not fancy. It is simply laid down. Because our God knows our faith. And he's not putting on a show like man loves to put on a show. Oh yes, sadly. Sadly for some of you out there. Christianity is not for show. 